Okay, I'm gonna make some fabric pumpkins. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a piece of this freezer paper, and you can see it's plastic coated. It comes on a roll like this. And the cool thing about it is this is so easy to use when you're creating any kind of little template for a project. So, you, so you're just going to take these little wedge shapes. I freehanded them. I don't remember where I came up with this design, so I'm sorry for not giving credit to the proper person, but you're gonna take a scrap of any kind of fabric you want, and you're gonna iron shiny side down on that piece of fabric. And here it is again, just showing you, you can use anything you want, cotton, wool, flannel, anything, and then you're gonna cut the pieces out. So those are the pieces that you have. They don't have to be perfectly cut out, but you're gonna sew them together. You need six pieces for each pumpkin. So I'm gonna throw, sew them together in groups of three. So I'm gonna create one little group of three on my sewing machine and then another group of three. I don't use pins usually when I'm working with a really small piece like this. Um, it probably would be more accurate if I did, but you certainly can hand sew this if you don't have a sewing machine. It'll just take a little bit longer to get the pieces together. But you're gonna create a little group of three and then another little group of three. So as you can see, you're kind of creating almost like a beach ball type shape. So I've got these pieces together, groups of three, then I'm just gonna match up the center there. Again, I don't use pins. I'm just matching up as best as I can. And I can generally control the sewing machine pretty well, but you can certainly use pins. And again, you can sew this by hand. You do not have to have a sewing machine to do this project. It just certainly makes things a little bit quicker. So I've got my pieces together and then I'm just gonna turn it inside, right side out. And as you can see, it really does look like a little beach ball almost, but that's what you have. So next we're gonna add some fun stitching and embellishment to it. And I wanna show you guys I've got all my different kinds of embroidery floss, and I'm just trying to pick out a few that I think would coordinate with the colors that are on the fabric pieces. I'm not trying to match them exactly. I want it to pop out a little bit, not necessarily blend in. So I'm just turning my pieces around and taking a look at them. As you can see, I'm gonna make two of these pumpkins, and I'm laying out each piece, each set of thread with each pumpkin piece that I have going on. So I'm just picking from what I have. I would say that maybe three to four styles of floss should be with each pumpkin, just depending on how you want to embellish. But I'm going to stitch and you'll see I'm going to stitch along the edges in a few different patterns and really, really basic patterns, you guys. I'm just going along the edge, just trying to add some character and some contrast to this piece. And I realized after a while that I shouldn't have sewn it closed. So I ended up opening it back up just to make it a little bit easier. So don't sew it together like I did earlier in the video. And I wanted to show you guys that because this is real. <laughs> this is how I'm really learning how to do these things. And I don't mind showing you guys the mess ups. That's just life. You live and you learn. So I'm just going across the edges here doing some fun stitching and just kind of straightening, pulling the fabric a little bit taut so my stitches are nice and even. And honestly, the more that you practice at this, the better that you're gonna get at it. But I just have like super simple, you know, stitching across the edges, stitching along the edges here. And you can see another pattern that I'm doing right here, which is one line on each side of where the seam is for this. There's no right or wrong way to do this. If you know how to do fancy embroidery stitches, you can certainly do that, but I don't know how to do any of those. I know that you can you can get really, really creative and fun with this. And I'm using basic stitches as well because these are gonna be smaller size pumpkins. If you had something bigger, you could certainly do a more involved stitch because it's gonna show up a lot more than this did. So that's what we have. And then I sewed it closed again, and I'm just taking some batting. You could use any kind of pillow stuffing. You could even use like old other pieces of fabric, but I had this batting from a quilt, like quilt batting, and I'm tearing it into little pieces. It's fairly stiff, 
And I actually kind of like that because I feel like it's going to give it some good shape. And I'm just stuffing it inside. And you can make this as full as you want. I think I ended up using three of these little squares of batting to get this, this filled up. And you can make it really squishy. You can make it overstuffed. Just know that as you're filling it up, the next step you're going to have to do is to stitch the top closed. So keep that in mind as you're working because you're going to have to end up closing it up. So you want to make sure that batting is inside as much as possible. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just using like a simple in and out stitch to close the top up of this little pumpkin. And it still doesn't look like a pumpkin, you guys. It's, it's coming along, but it's definitely not there yet. So just a simple in and out kind of motion with the needle and thread. And I always double up my thread just to keep it really nice and secure. So now we're getting into pumpkin territory, but you can see that bottom still looks really ugly, but that's okay. Just, just keep going. It's gonna work out. So the next thing we're gonna do is have a little opening at the top and we're going to add a stem and I got these little branches from Dollar Tree. You could use anything. You could use like a stick from your yard. I just happen to have these little wood pieces. And so I stuck it inside and I just stitched it and I'm just going to pull that, like pull it, wrap it around a few times. Then I'm going to go through the top of the pumpkin with my needle down to the bottom. And this is when it really, really starts looking like a pumpkin. You're going to take it and pull it kind of taut. And as you can see, that pumpkin shape is starting to come to life. And we can hide that little bubble at the bottom. No one's gonna know it's there by the time we're done. So you're just going in and out. I like to do this a few times, and that gives that real realistic pumpkin look, as well as really secures everything and hides any little, little mishaps there at the bottom. So like I said, about three or four times through, just watch your fingers as you're doing this. I probably should have been wearing a thimble, but I'm not big on that. So that's what I have. And then I definitely gonna, once I'm finished pulling that super taut, I'm gonna knot it a few times. And now I'm gonna add some little leaves and embellishments to the top of this. This is where you could really personalize and have fun with this. You wanna keep in mind the size and the scale of the leaves and branches that you're using. You want them to look like they somewhat belong on there, but as you can see, you can really see that stitching pop on those seams and it looks really, really good. So we're coming along here, it's looking good, but I'm, at, I'm gonna add a few more pieces. I like to take a lot of my florals and just create my own pieces. So I've got like some lambs here and some little greenery that I glued together and I'm gonna add that to the top. And you can see how I have also added a few other pieces on the back pumpkin as well. So I've got those, both of those going on here. And I end up actually adding a smaller piece of lamb's ear, the leaf, because I thought the one I had on before was too large and it just didn't look right in the scale as I started paying attention to it. So I've got that and I'm just gonna glue it down onto the top of the pumpkin. So again, I'm just going in with some greenery, trying to create some, some layers and some texture just to make it look like it should be there. And I always lay stuff down first and then I add the glue later if I'm unsure. That's a little tip for you guys if you're not sure. And the great thing about hot glue is it's super forgiving you have a little time before it dries if you need to reposition something. So that is what I have. And yeah, I just think they turned out so, so cute, but we're not quite done yet. So I'm taking a few pieces of my embroidery floss that I had left over and I'm going around the top of this just to add again that layered texture and some color. And then this piece here, I'm gonna end up adding a couple of buttons so I wanted to stitch. I wanted to add a little stitch or two around to add some color and some floss to the top. So that's what you're seeing me do right here is just add those pieces and wrap that stem a little bit. And to be honest, it hides a little bit of that stitching and that opening. 
So the leaves do that as well. So you could kind of do a combination of the floss at the top or the leaves. And I'm giving it a little bit of a wrap here, but I think adding a few little things like buttons and fun stuff is really gonna make a difference in how personal these pumpkins are. You could do something really, you know, sentimental for, you know, you could take something off maybe a family member's garment that you may have and love and a little tribute piece. That would be really special. But you could definitely use anything you had on hand. And it doesn't necessarily all have to be traditional colors. You can see my pumpkins are blue, but I'm adding some browns and some traditional orange and gold that you would see more in the fall colors. But I had these like fun shirting fabrics in blue colors and I just thought it would be a fun twist on that. You can see in the background of this video that I also have a pumpkin made out of super dark like wool suiting fabric. Those would be fun to do too because those offer a lot more texture. It just depends on the style that you're going for with this. So this is what I have. I just I feel like they turned out so great and the last thing I'm gonna do is add this little brass button. I had a lot of different options and I found this cute little brass. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna throw that on here and see how that looks. And so I'm just going through with my, with my thread here. And I also added, you can see on the other pumpkin, I added some wood beads next to that button as well. I didn't get great video of that, but I did add some wood beads as well. So just anything to add layers and texture, and you can totally tell a story with this. I think you could seriously have so much fun doing a lot of different looks with this, with different types of greenery and buttons and beads, and just have a blast with it. So I'm just putting that last little guy on here. Anytime I add a button like this with, a, with the shank on the back of the button, I want to stitch through a few times so it stays nice and secure and if you're ever worried you can just add a little dab of hot glue but I just stitched it on and I feel like it's going to hold it just fine so again adding a little bit of color in with that thread and definitely hiding any of that that closure up at the top where the stem is so you can definitely see where that that little spot is is hiding there so the next thing I'm going to do is just give these guys a little final trim and I'm going to show you guys how I have them just set on a table. Again, this was a super fun project, super easy, pretty quick, but I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much.